Dragon Age The Veil Guard is one of my most anticipated games for this year and in today's video we have a ton of big news to talk about. We have new information from Game Informer regarding how armor and transmog is going to work as well as difficulty options, romance options, and of course nudity featured in Dragon Age The Veil Guard. We're also going to talk about when the release date for Dragon Age The Veil Guard is set to be and so much more. Guys we have a lot to talk about so check the video chapters for easy viewing and let's get into it. But real quick guys if you're like me and you can't get enough of action RPGs with my bending puzzles and thrilling adventures well then you're in for a treat kaku ancient seal is an open world action adventure game now released with a 25 percent discount available now on steam join kaku and his trusty companion peggy as they traverse stunning landscapes each filled with unique challenges and hidden secrets engage in heart pounding combat utilizing powerful combos and special skills to vanquish formidable foes explore ancient ruins where every step could lead to a hidden chamber or a perilous trap solve intricate puzzles that will test your intellect and wit, unearth valuable treasures, and upgrade your equipment to become a legendary hero. With four expansive maps, diverse combat styles, unlockable divine powers, epic boss battles, infinite customization options, a mysterious new realm of ruins, and dynamic open world gameplay, Kaku Ancient Seal offers an unforgettable 30 plus hour journey. Don't miss out on this incredible adventure. Kaku Ancient Seal is out now on Steam, Steam China, and Wii Game. Grab your copy today through the link in the top of the description and save 25% off for a limited time all right so starting things off we're going to talk about the armor and transmog and other aspects of gear in dragon age of Elgard. in a recent interview with game informer we actually have some details about how all of those systems will be working in the article they said dragon age of Elgard features a ton of different customization options just within the character creator there are hundreds of options for customizing things like hair body your rook's face and so much more now there's also a ton of armor options too they said companions have an armor slot a ring slot and an accessory slot and a weapon slot while rook has access to even more a helmet two weapon slots a belt an amulet slot and two ring slots they then said a belt having its own slot might sound odd as it's not an armor piece people typically think about when kitting out an rpg warrior however the belt is an important facet of rook's kit the better rook belt the better the potency of their healing potions will be which are replenished by destroying green pots scattered around the world but that's not all though as higher quality belts can proc additional effects like momentary invulnerability they then continued by saying when creating your character you can immediately view aspirational armors which won't play into your rook's class until the mid to late game according to the game director corin bush you could also toggle rook starting gear and casual wear in the crater giving you a pretty good look at how rook will look in a more laid back cutscenes in combat and how they might appear later in your veil guard journey the game director then says that a lot of the gear in veil guard is bespoke to your rook or their followers which is to say an armor piece for a warrior class rook probably won't be in a chest for a mage class rook on a similar note armor designed for companion Ballara can't be used for another companion like lace harding the game director then goes on to say that there is transmogrification or transmog for short and apparently this is a robust system which basically means you could take armor stats and apply it to different pieces of armor if you have a really cool piece of armor you like and you find a new piece with better stats but don't want to give up the look of your current character's armor you don't have to transmog allows you to take that new armor and apply it to your current armor and then they said that transmog isn't just for rook though you could transmog armor and other things for your companions as well which honestly i'm really glad that this game features transmog it'd be weird if it didn't but the fact that this is a robust system is pretty exciting so moving right along we have some new details regarding how romance options will work as well as relationship level according to a game informer exclusive they said every companion in the game has a relationship level related Related to Rook and the choices you make and not even specifically about the companions but in the world in general what you say to companions how you help or don't help them and more all play into it every time you rank up a companion's relationship level you unlock a skill point to spend specifically on that companion though companion skill trees pale in comparison to Rook's expansive tree which features passive abilities combat abilities and more as well as paths to three unique class specializations there's still some more customization here each companion has access to five abilities but can only take Take three into combat thus it's important to strategize which abilities to spend a skill point on and so on and so forth they then stated that romance is a key part of relationships in the game bush says that noting some of the romances will get quite spicy however not all of them will as each romance has a very different flavor some characters are straight to the point while other characters are a lot more awkward having never been in a relationship before you know who these characters are and how their romances unfold she likens romantic and platonic relationships to another way to level up your companions 
It's not just experience and skill points that determines Rook standing with companions, but diegetic conversations too. They then said that Bioware has already revealed that every companion in Veilguard is player sexual, they said, which sees NPCs adjust their romance and sexual interests based on the player rather than their own sense of sexuality, to which they said that that's a critical distinction because in Veilguard, your companions aren't just going to vie for your affection, they might take attraction to other companions in the titular Veilguard. Giving one companion the cold shoulder might nudge them into warm shoulder of someone else on the team. The game director then confirms that companions can form relationships and romances with each other, but we don't know if that means that it will lock Rook out from forming a romance with them as well. The interviewer then said that they saw nothing resembling romance in their early hours in the game. However, they did see romantically inclined emotional responses in Rook's dialogue choices at times which led to my rook flirting with the ice mage and private detective bush then says this is an option to flirt and push platonic relationships into romantic territory though rook's flirtatious efforts aren't always reciprocated but that's not to say that you should ignore the other options as well and on the topic of relationships it was confirmed that dragon age of Valgard will indeed include nudity and according to a game informer exclusive they said that that's something that they learned firsthand while customizing my rook within bioware's edmonton canada office they said that we were customizing a feminine rook and while adjusting body options that's when the game director smiled likely knowing full well that the nudity in the character creator means nudity elsewhere in the game like in Veilguard's romances to which they confirmed that this is a quote-unquote mature rpg they then said that i only see topless nudity in the character creator and when i later asked bioware if there were any bottom nudity as well i'm told that there is something that wants to let fans discover for themselves in the game which is quite a curious answer they then said that the game leads wouldn't share too much information about romance options but the interviewer said i have a feeling the nudity will play a part in some cutscenes, and that's what bioware is alluding to next up according to game informer as well we have details regarding how difficult and gameplay customization will work in the game according to game informer they said before starting the game properly a play style screen allows players to customize various options affecting how veilguard plays here you could select the difficulty or play style as bioware calls it with options like storyteller or game reviewer mode for those interested in more story versus the combat there's the adventurer for an experience that seemingly balances the story and combat and a difficulty level called nightmare mode there might be more they said but that's all that they could see in the demo now there's another difficulty option called unbound allowing players to customize their gameplay experience to their liking you can customize how wayfinding helps you in game there's aim assistance and even auto aim options you can adjust combat timing to make pairing easier or harder with a balance for giving and a third option you could change how much damage your enemies do to you and how much damage you do to enemies by adjusting their health there's also an option to adjust enemy pressure and if you're not interested in death related setbacks there's a no death option you could turn on they then said that players can look forward to a similar accessibility and approachability options you might expect but those will be revealed closer to the game's launch i'm sure next up one of the biggest questions that we all have is when is dragon age the Guard going to launch while we don't have an official release date for Dragon Age of Elgar just yet, we do have a window which is set to be fall of 2024. So within the next few months is when we should be getting the official release date. That is if the game doesn't get pushed back. Typically these games go through about a six to 10 month marketing timeline. And then from there, they get the release date announced and then eventually release. Could Dragon Age of Elgard get delayed? I think it's very possible. However, with all the marketing that's been done with Dragon Age of Elgard, I would say that they're probably going to be able to release it this year. And honestly, I don't think there's a way that EA will allow this game to get delayed again. However, with how critically acclaimed the previous installment was, Dragon Age Inquisition, I would really hope that EA has allowed Bioware to cook as much as possible and make sure that this game is of the standards that it should be. Now, if there isn't a delay for Dragon Age of Elgard, I would say that the release date will be revealed relatively soon because fall 2024 is rapidly approaching my guess is the release date will be sometime in october but again who knows well guys that's gonna wrap it up with this video let me know what your thoughts are on dragon age of Elgard. are you excited for this game do you plan on picking it up once it releases is this the game that you've been waiting for for a while thanks for watching and until next time this has been wes and i will talk to you guys in the next video